Uh, we're going to find the value of the arc length of the given function. Um, in particular, this one we have y equals x squared over 2 minus the natural log of x over 4 on the interval from 1 to 3. So you may recall that the arc length is given by the relationship of the arc length, right? So that we have the square root of 1 plus uh, the derivative square of the function f, in this case f is this y of x, uh, dx in this interval. And we're doing that with respect to x because we're looking at the partitions along the x-axis and we have our function in terms of x. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and I like to calculate uh, kind of like the stuff underneath the square root first. I find that uh, plugging it in with the integral and writing all that kind of makes things convoluted. So um, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to calculate the derivative, then square it, and then add one to it to see uh, if I can simplify it before I plug it back in. Okay, so uh, we have y prime of x is equal to bring, using the power rule, bringing down the two. The twos are going to divide out. And I reduce the exponent on the x squared to one, or by one, I should say. Okay, and then the derivative, the constant term one fourth, this comes out in front. And then the derivative of the natural log is one over x. Simplifying all this, we get x minus one over four x is our is our result there. Okay. So now that we have uh, now we have the y prime, we're going to square this function. Okay. So now let's look at what does y prime of x squared look like. Well, that would be x minus one over four x squared. Okay. Uh, so let's follow that out. Uh, we have x squared multiplying x times x. We can add in two of them. Minus, um, there's going to be a, an x times 1 over 4x. So it's going to give us a 1, 4. And then you're going to have another x times a minus 1 over 4x. So it's going to be a minus 1 fourth again. And then you're going to have a minus 1 fourth x times a minus 1 fourth x. So it's going to give us plus 1 over uh, 16x squared. Okay, uh, simplifying that a little bit more. We have x squared, a half, minus and a minus, make that a half, minus one half, uh, plus one over 16x squared. Okay, and then uh, we still have, so that's this term all squared now, and so now we have to worry about the plus one. Okay, so now we have one plus y prime of x, Squared. We know what y prime of x squared is. That's this whole wonderful thing over here. So we have 1 plus x squared minus 1 half plus 1 over 16x squared. Okay. Uh, so the 1 minus the 1 half gives us 1 half plus x squared plus 1 over 16x squared. Okay. Uh, and now it looks like maybe the last thing to do would be to get a common denominator. Uh, it looks like 16x squared. Uh, we'll do it for all of the terms. So um, if I look at what do I need to multiply each of these by, I would have, well, 1 half, it needs to be multiplied by 8x squared over 8x squared plus, uh, well, 16 uh, uh, x squared doesn't have a, have either of those, it's going to need a 16x squared and a 16x squared to match the denominators. And then, of course, the plus 1 over 16x squared. It doesn't need anything, so it's got that. Okay. Uh, combining like terms, it looks like we have a 16x to the fourth. So I'm going to write them in standard form. So highest x minus 4. So 16x to the fourth uh, looks like plus 8x squared uh, looks like plus 1 all divided by uh, 16x squared. Okay, now what I notice here is this is an x to the fourth, and that's four, or 16 is a perfect square, right? We saw that earlier, that's four. And then uh, we have a double the uh, normal amount here. So this looks actually like a perfect square trinomial of the form of 4x squared plus one. 
In fact, that's exactly what those factors too. So this is four x squared plus one squared divided by uh, 16 x squared. And so this is a really nice form because the square we have two perfect squares here. And so now that we have going back up to our integral here, uh, we want to take the uh, square root of this. And since these are both perfect squares, the square root and the square will cancel each other out. And so the length then is equal to the integral from going back up to original problem was one to three for limits of integration. And so we have the square root of 4x squared plus 1 quantity squared over 16x squared dx. Canceling out the square roots and assuming on the interval from 1 to 3, these are all positive, so we don't know you need to worry about the absolute value. So we're going to go from 1 to 3. We're going to get 4x squared plus 1 divided by uh, 4x squared dx. Oh, I said 4x squared, sorry. It should be 4x. And the square root canceling in this way. Okay. And now uh, this kind of looks like it might be a difficult integral to do, but realize that we have a common denominator. And in this term, in this case, it actually is easier to break it up and then use the power rule uh, to simplify this. So we have the integral from one to three. We're going to have four x squared over four x plus using that as a common denominator plus one over four x dx. These cancel, right? So the four and the four reduce to one, and then the x and the x squared uh, reduce to just the one x. So I'll write it out just so that we're clear. This is going to be x plus one four one over x dx. Okay. So now I can integrate each of these terms since the integral is a linear operator. Uh, so the integral of x is is x squared divided by two. Evaluated from one to three. And then I have adding on to that the one fourth term gets factored out. This is the integral of one over x, which we saw earlier was the natural log of x, evaluated from one to three. Okay. Now you'll notice that the natural log of one is zero. So we technically don't need to worry about the lower limit of integration here. Um, if we plug everything in, we have one half. 3 squared minus 1 squared plus 1 fourth natural log of 3 minus natural log of 1. Again, this is 0. Uh, this is 9 minus 1, so this is 8. Half of 8 is 4. Okay. And then we have 4 plus uh, 1 fourth natural log of 3. So we could simplify it a little bit more. Um, we could factor out a common term, or we could use this up here as an exponent. Uh, but that is uh, that is good for now. Right. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.